Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. This is by request. Now my Ancient America series, one of the questions I get most often is what has been found as far as some really tall people. Some people call them giants. I don't. They're just as tall as the tallest people today, so they're not giants. But coming from two, three thousand years ago, they are very, very tall people, and it had to have some they had to have some stature in their culture based on their height. That is my opinion. We're going to go down one of the stranger mound sites that was excavated, one of the stranger stories. This is Dover, Kentucky, a really small town here. And this is one of the more frustrating mound site videos I've done just because I can't pinpoint where this mound was. And I'll tell you exactly where I think it was. And this was excavated about 70 years ago, totally wiped out. I think it was down right in this area somewhere, but it says excavations done in the 1950s. This road is still called the same road. It says it was a thousand feet east of this road, so I'm guessing somewhere in this area right here. But here is an old photo of the Dover Mound before it was excavated. Permission was given to excavate in this mound in 1950 by the owner of the property, Mrs. Perry Barrett, on the condition that the mound be totally removed. Here is what was remaining of the mound, what hadn't really eroded away over the many centuries since it was built. This was roughly 20 feet tall at the time of this pick here, and it was used as a hog breeding area on the farm. Here you see an old pick of the excavation, and this comes from a book called The Dover Mound, by William S. Webb and Charles E. Snow. Here you see a truck backed up to the lower part of the mound, and there was trees growing in and around it that were centuries old here. But this will give you a little idea of scale. Not the largest structure, but when it's made pretty much one basketful at a time. Pretty impressive structure coming from maybe 3,000 years ago, 2,500 years ago in that ballpark. Here is a pic of the excavation work done here by Midsummer, 1950. Here it says, the mound put in condition for the winter of 1950-51. Mr. Perry Barrett is standing at the edge of the excavation. He was owner of the property. But what they wanted to do is they wanted to determine the base of the mound for their archaeology work. And the base of the mound they found was down about three feet lower than the current surface of the land. Now here you see a diagram of the mound and there was burials put in the very outside of it that dated to roughly about 2,000 years ago. But what I want to concentrate is, is this area, the central upper part of the mound and there was a log tomb in here and four burials and one of the largest skeletons found in an Adena mound. Here is the base of the mound and then cremations under small mounds of marl there was burn bones found down at the very base down here. And these cremations had over them a six inch wide layer of fist sized river stones. But number three, log and bark tombs and mound section of mingle loads of marl and sandy clay loam. Four is the big fired area right next to these four burials that I'm going to talk about at the end where the large skeleton was found. And then the layer five comes from about 2,000 years ago, and there was a few intrusive burials in the very exterior of the mound. Now here is a dog jaw from burial number four, and we have found these in many mounds, and I think we have an explanation for these now. Here is an area excavated from the mound where the burials were. Sheets of mica were placed under the skull, and... That is really strange. Sheets of mica. Here is what they described as curve mica strips found at the feet of one of the burials. And I'm just not sure. I didn't look into it for this video, but is mica available in this area? And mica has some pretty interesting characteristics. And here are the burial statistics, what was found in here, the artifacts found with who was buried in here. But here they tell how these graves were made, and the logs were made with uh, five of the graves, bark eight, bark used above and below the skeleton, 12, burials covered by small clay mounds, there was eight of those, 
Red ochre observed in graves, 11 of the 19. Total burials with artifacts in association, there was 19. Burials with copper artifacts, 14. Burials with mica artifacts, 3. Also flint, 3. Burials with shell beads, 4, probably from Florida. Burials with leather or textile fragments preserved, there was 10. So that gives you a good indication of what was found in here. Now in that main part of the mound where the log tomb was that was burned, it says this was a group of four extended bodies, three males between the ages of 25 and 30 and a female about 13 years old, placed at the center of a heavy bark layer about 15 feet in diameter. This bark layer was laid on a floor of small logs and poles placed side by side and centered about stake 5 R55 at an elevation of 15.5 feet above the benchmark. The bodies have been placed side by side, three close together and a four slightly separated, but head to foot. The remains of burial 40 is one of the largest known to Adena. The skull foot field measurement is 84 inches. Some of the bones were calcined, the remainder were heavily smoked. The grave showed evidence of the use of red ochre at the time of burial. Some of the shell beads accompanying these burials were partially calcined and broken, and others covered with soot. The earth layer covering these burials was burned on top of discolored by the large fire on top of the grave. The underside of this earth was also colored red by the fire which burned the logs and bark, constituting the tomb covering. There was thus much charcoal remaining from this fire. Sample V42 was taken for radiocarbon dating with the results indicated above. And that was determined to be about roughly 2,700 years ago. So a skeleton over 7 feet 2 inches tall during life, probably just a little bit taller. But here found with the large skeleton, one of the strangest skulls I've ever seen says these four burials were covered with red ochre and then set ablaze but the cremation only smoked most of the bones and didn't destroy them entirely i wonder if the seven foot man was the chief and the other two men were his bodyguards or shamans and the girl perhaps a princess or a wife possibly sacrificed to accompany her husband into the afterlife those are all assumptions i will leave this link below but it says here Left oblique view of skull of burial 42, an adult male with very prominent nose and chin. The back of the skull shows a pronounced degree of flattening. Uh, that is a very strange skull. Now I will leave a few links below, but here are some of the skulls that were found here. They don't have one of the giant seven foot tall skull, but it says cranial analysis. Not only do the Dover people show the results of head shaping, or cranial deformation, but they exceed the total Kentucky series in the great width and height of the skull vault. On the left is the one skull I already mentioned. On the right it says front and side view of the skull of burial 54, an adult female with typical Adena features. Note very flat back head and the high crown presented in the side view. It says another burial, number nine, was of a rugged male, five foot six inches tall, 35 to 40 years old, whose skull was encased with the jaws of a mountain lion, and he wore an elaborate cloak of mica and leather made to impersonate a great cat. He wore copper bracelets on his wrist and was buried with red ochre and other pigments. The shaman or panther man was found with the skeleton of a female about 20 years old, on top of his own skeleton. Webb and Snow speculate that this young lady was the shaman's daughter or magician's assistant and was sacrificed, willingly or not, to accompany him into the world of the spirits. But here you see, I already mentioned the dog or wolf's jaw. Here are the upper part of wolf's jaws and some dog jaws here down below. And they put a theory out here and I agree with it that these were shaman, these were the priests. Here is one skull with the top row missing. What they would do is they would insert the dog's jaw or the wolf's jaw into the skull upon burial 
and this will give him some sort of meaning in the afterlife or maybe designate who he was during his life on earth. But they talk about adenocytes where this type of burial was done. But at the Dover Mound in Kentucky here on the Ohio River, it seems that a mountain lion or a panther's jaw was used to give this guy designation in burial. That is the story of the lost Dover Mound. Somewhere in this general vicinity, excavated and removed about 70 years ago, one of the largest skeletons ever found in an Adena Mound, but certainly some interesting finds here, artifacts, remains. Here is the area in southern Ohio, West Virginia, all these places. Adena were here and thriving. Many cities, many mounds in this area. Hope you thought that was cool. The Dover Mound, pretty interesting place. You all have a very nice day.